Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to take a look at a newer offering from Ed Kim over at Red Horse Knife Works. Now if you follow my channel for any length of time, you know that I've been a fan of Ed's and a friend of Ed's for many, many years. Going back, I want to say roughly about three years uh, when I did the very first reviews on his knives. Uh, one of my early examples is right here. This was a uh, chopper that he built for me a number of years ago. And then two or three years ago, he upgraded it. He took mine back and uh, redid it and made a Black Death chopper. Uh, so the Black Death variation of the chopper. And I've had this for years. Absolutely love it. I think it's a fantastic knife. However, he has grown as a maker, as many makers, as many good makers, I should say, uh, should do. He has evolved. He has worked harder on his finishing. He's worked harder on the refinement of the smaller details. And you could see a lot of influences uh, from the, the people that he's learned from as he was beginning his career. You're starting to see that blossom into his newer knives. Now, what we're taking a look at here today is a newer custom variation of the Frost Hammer. Now, when I say custom, I specify that mainly because what they do at Red Horse Knife Works is offer uh, basically mid-tech knives. If you want a full custom knife, you can choose from any of the models they make and they'll make you a full custom version, but the prices go up. You can buy the mid-techs in various packages. So like this one here, the base price starts at $565 and that's just going to be for titanium uh, on the front and back and CPM 154 blade with a basic uh, satin finish to upgrade into this gorgeous mother of pearl the mirror polished zirconium bolsters, the pivot collars, the customized pivot, and all the detail work that you see that's been done here is obviously a very expensive upgrade, but very well worth it. It's kind of hard to get it to lay that way because of the pocket clip, so we'll lay it that way. Definitely very well worth the extra money that was spent on this knife. Now, this is not my knife. This is something that I saw at building and I went, Oh my God, I've got to get my hands on one of these and show it to people. As you guys know, I don't really have a lot of time these days to do videos. So it's a very rare occasion, maybe once a month, that I have the time outside of my shop to sit down here, do photography, uh, do the editing, do the video, do the editing, upload it, and all the stuff that goes along with it. It's, it's a few hours worth of work. And I just can't justify being out of my shop not making knives in order to do that for you know what is you know for free I'm not getting paid to do this but I come across certain knives and I go oh man not only do I want to fondle that but I want to show this to my subscribers and let people see what this maker is capable of doing and I've had the wonderful pleasure of sharing many of Ed's knives with you but what I particularly enjoy is watching a maker evolve over time, evolve over the years, hone their skills, become better and better and better, and then go back and share with you the progressions that they've made. And uh, this is another big step in Ed's evolution. I'm very, very proud of him and very happy for him and for his customers. Let's take a look at it closed first off and take a look at the detail work that he's put throughout the titanium liners. So what you've got here are mirror polished titanium liners. You then have a blue, I'm assuming G10, blue G10 uh, liner over that and then the mother of pearl scales over that. Seamlessly matched up to beautifully polished zirconium bolsters which I've already gotten fingerprints on. I apologize. I've done my best to keep this clean. The pocket clip is also zirconium, and that is inlaid with multiple inlays of copper. Then you have the copper rotating wheel for the clip, so your contact point is very small, and this actually does rotate, so as it's sliding in and out of the pocket, this is going to spin and make it easier to get it in and out. Your pivot collars here are going to be done also in solid copper. Beautifully machined. Those are obviously custom done by Ed. Then you have the blue anodized titanium pivot screws. 
you see all of that gorgeous polishing and I really love the divots these individual little dots that he's milled into the titanium very precise very 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 well done it adds a lot of pop to the overall look of the knife and it goes all the way around baby look at that all the way around to the back and then you get to this unbelievably gorgeous sculpted zirconium backspacer with again the copper inlays individually inlaid but they're a little bit proud so instead of having jimping done into the backspacer you have a little bit of texture because each of those are going to be raised just a little bit now you can't feel these these are perfectly level and uh, and true with the pocket clip but you do feel these they're like little little globes very 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 slick so beautiful detail work all the way around take a look at the flipper tab as well he's also done file work on the flipper tab kinda gives it a little bit more of a jewelry type look then we get to the blade uh, I do believe this is still going to be a CPM 154 blade it's ground extremely thin this is a very thin blade this is going to be an excellent slicer you've got the milled fuller with the holes running through there you see they run all the way through beautifully done nice compound grind which the uh, frost hammer doesn't uh, always have notice also that he uh, crowned the spine as well so the entire spine of the knife is nicely rounded and it's not just rounded I, I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up I'll try to bounce some light off of it you probably see it there so he's got a crown spine that he then goes back and he puts a flat right down the center so it's rounded with a short flat going all the way down that is a really really slick touch uh, he has then mirror polished all of those surfaces and then right up down the side of the crown spine it is also mirror polished and that goes all the way down and fades off into the tip so it's it's almost like a like a trailing swedge the way that it just trails off there to the tip very very nicely done that's a nice small detail that unless it's in your hand you're probably never gonna know is there uh, but yet there it is nicely done all the way around good lockup very early as you can see there but very strong it's a fast flipper now this is not broken in yet I'm, I'm going to assume it's gonna get a little bit smoother with time uh, the pivot feels a little bit tight to me I don't know if, let's see if it's the pivot or if it's the lock bar tension uh, the lock bar isn't really all that heavy so I'm gonna say it's a little bit tight on the pivot I think it could be a little tiny bit smoother but that may be one of those things that over time it's going to break in now this is a nice small but chunky carry you've got a three and a quarter inch blade and it's a four and a quarter inch handle so you have a lot of room left over here uh, in the length of the handle. Now, that's the basic specifications. This one may be trimmed down just a hair. I haven't actually uh, measured this individual specimen here. But the mother of pearl work is gorgeous. You see the orient in the mother of pearl brings out a nice depth and play of color. Offset by the anodized blue titanium screws. very clean you know, you take a good look at the edges of the mother of pearl and it's been nicely rounded cleaned up all the way around all the polishing has been done on the scales beautifully there's no cloudiness there are no micro scratches left anywhere there's no chipping everything meets up perfectly seamless junctions and mother of pearl is not easy to work with it's a very fragile material it's very easy to chip and crack absolutely gorgeous all the way around this is not really going to be in a full in-depth kind of review but I did want to be able to show you the entire knife talk about a few of the little details in it 
and then get this off to its rightful owner who has been extremely patient. I have had this about two months. So there's, there is a very patient person out there that paid a tremendous amount of money for this custom knife made specifically for him. And it's been sitting here in my office for about two months. So uh, I have to thank him for his generosity and his patience. I'm sure Ed is wondering, where the hell is the video? But here, here we go. I finally had time to do it. Uh, all around, it's a really cool design. Again, it's a blocky design. It's meant specifically to be that. Uh, he does do blocky designs. He does do organic designs, like you see here, very soft and flowing. It's just the nature of this particular design. And a lot of that, I believe, comes from his mentor, whom we've discussed in the past. I just think it's a phenomenal use of materials and a phenomenal use of his time by putting in all of this detail work, all of this polishing. Uh, all the liners here are a very, very high satin. And then you've got the spine of the blade that's mirror polish going into a hand rub satin. Hand rub satin flats. Just, uh, just really, really, really well done. He has left the high belt satin on the forward grind, on the uh, tip grind. So you really have, you know, one, two, three, four, five different finishes on one blade. Very slick, very cool. Take a look at the centering there. Boom. Which admittedly is something that Ed had struggled with early on in his career. Now he's got that locked down beautifully, nicely centered. Everything is just built right. Um, all the technical things on this build were done right. Carbonized lock face, good quality steel, uh, nice uh, solid lockup. Even though, yes, it is early, it is a solid lockup. There's no play in the pivot, no play in the lock. Backspacer is perfect and true. Everything is lined up the way that it should be. Everything is cleaned up all the way around. All the edges are rounded and softened. There are no hot spots anywhere on the knife. So basically, all the way around, no matter where you look at this knife, you could tell a lot of time was taken on it. And you could tell that uh, a lot of quality uh, is, is going to come out of owning this knife over many, many, many years. So I wanted to give you a chance to see that up close. If you want to see some more of Ed's work, you could check out other reviews I've done on my channel, of course. And check them out at redhorseknifeworks.com. And you can go through their catalog of models, see what their basic prices are. Oops, excuse me, about, I didn't mean to move the camera like that. It's not like it's an earthquake. Uh, you can go through their catalog of models, see what their basic prices are, see what their packages are, and you go, hey, you know what, uh, the packages are cool, but they're not exactly what I want. I want to go balls to the wall, and let's do something crazy, and Ed is all about balls to the wall. I mean, I, I think that's probably tattooed somewhere on one of his biceps. Balls to the wall, uh, he will do pretty much anything that you can think of, and that, my friends, is the fun of collecting in custom knives.